Today we'll be talking about a case in which a severe complication after a routine childhood vaccine led to the diagnosis of an underlying defect in this baby's immune system. Sven was a baby boy who appeared completely healthy at birth after a normal pregnancy and delivery. At his two-month well-child checkup, his family physician saw that he was growing and developing well. His mother proudly reported that Sven had recently started smiling, especially when his six-year-old sister sang to him. At that appointment, Sven received his routine two-month vaccines, including the oral vaccine for rotavirus, a common cause of diarrhea in young children. Several days after his doctor's appointment, Sven developed a fever and frequent watery diarrhea, requiring about 15 diaper changes per day. His mother took him back to the doctor's office, and she was told that Sven most likely had a viral gastrointestinal infection, which should resolve on its own within about a week. She was advised to continue breastfeeding Sven normally, and that if he wasn't feeding well, his mother could also give him a pediatric oral rehydration solution from the pharmacy. But two weeks after the illness began, the diarrhea continued. Sven was now refusing to nurse or take the oral rehydration solution, and his parents noticed that he seemed sleepy and less active. His mother took him back to see the doctor, and this time the physician noted that Sven appeared drowsy and wasn't very responsive to his voice or touch. His eyes were sunken, and so was the soft spot on top of his head. He also had a very dry mouth, and when the doctor gently pinched his skin into a fold, it took a long time to bounce back. When Sven cried, the physician also noticed that he didn't make any tears. His pulse and breathing were both faster than normal for his age, and Sven had lost 10% of his body weight since his well-child checkup two weeks earlier. Because this baby showed many of the signs of moderate to severe dehydration, which had failed oral rehydration therapy, the doctor sent him to be admitted to the hospital. At the hospital, IV access was obtained to give Sven fluids. A blood sample was taken to evaluate his electrolytes, blood pH, kidney function, and blood counts. A stool sample, which appeared watery with no blood or mucus, was sent for culture, microscopic analysis, and a rapid test for rotavirus. Although he had received the rotavirus vaccine three weeks earlier, Sven's stool tested positive for rotavirus antigen. Knowing that the rotavirus vaccine contains a weakened but live strain of rotavirus, his medical team wondered if this could be a case of the vaccine strain rotavirus causing disease. A stool sample was sent to the Centers for Disease Control to test for this possibility. Rotavirus typically enters its human host orally and makes its way through the GI tract to colonize the small intestine. If a person has been exposed to the virus before, their B cells will remember the virus and secrete antibodies, particularly IgA, onto mucosal surfaces where it neutralizes the virus and prevents it from ever entering intestinal cells or causing disease. But if not enough of these antibodies are present, rotavirus enters the epithelial cells lining the intestines, where it persists and replicates, disrupting their metabolism and making them unable to absorb nutrients. Because of this, more digested material and nutrients remain in the lumen of the intestine, and water flows into the lumen driven by osmosis and leading to the watery diarrhea seen in this case. The virus also disrupts the cell's ability to maintain tight junctions with neighboring cells, making the intestinal wall more permeable. At this stage, IgA antibodies undergoing transcytosis across the epithelial cells may bind to the virus inside the cells in an effort to inhibit viral replication. If this secondary defense mechanism fails and the virus is allowed to persist, it hijacks the cellular machinery to produce a toxin that leads to the secretion of chloride ions into the lumen, which exacerbates the diarrhea. To make matters worse, rotavirus infection can stimulate the nerves of the gut, which increases intestinal motility and the secretion of even more chloride ions. 
If the infection continues, it can lead to death of the infected cells and release of viral particles, which exit the host via the stool to potentially infect new hosts. The rotavirus vaccine consists of live attenuated rotavirus. The strains of rotavirus used in the live vaccines have proteins on their surface that are similar to those on more virulent natural strains. This allows the adaptive immune system to recognize and remember the virus, then protect the intestinal cells if the patient is exposed to natural strains of rotavirus in the future. But the vaccine strain is a disabled form of the virus that doesn't normally cause disease because it's been repeatedly grown in cell culture until it loses the ability to effectively infect the original human host. So why would Sven get so sick from this weakened strain of rotavirus? The clue to this puzzle came when the medical team viewed the results of Sven's blood count and saw that he had very low numbers of lymphocytes. Based on these findings, they suspected that Sven could have severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID, a syndrome in which a patient has no functional T cells or B cells. His blood was sent for a lymphocyte subset analysis, which showed that he had natural killer cells, but no T cells or B cells. Antibody levels were checked, and they showed that he had no IgA and very little IgM. He did have low levels of IgG present, which, at this young age, could be antibody that he had received from his mother during pregnancy. A chest x-ray was done, which showed that Sven lacked the sail-shaped shadow of the thymus, which is normally seen on the chest x-ray of a young infant. Together, these findings confirmed that Sven had skid. A few days later, the result from the CDC also returned, confirming that Sven's stool contained vaccine strain rotavirus. Skid is a syndrome that can be caused by a variety of genetic mutations crucial for the development of T and B cells. These mutations result in a complete absence of adaptive immune system function. Many babies with skid, like Sven, don't get sick during the first few months of life because of the protective IgG acquired from their mothers during pregnancy. However, as the IgG levels decline, these children become susceptible to overwhelming infection, and without treatment, most would die before their first birthday. For Sven, even the weak vaccine strain rotavirus was enough to cause severe illness because he lacked the antibodies that would normally limit the infection. Fortunately, it's possible to provide skid patients with a new functioning immune system through bone marrow transplant or gene therapy. Sven was continued on IV fluids and started on intravenous nutrition. He was also put under protective isolation in the hospital and received IV infusions of immune globulin to temporarily provide passive immunity. Workup for bone marrow transplant was begun, and Sven's older sister turned out to be a perfect match. The transplant was performed four weeks after the diagnosis, and about two weeks later, Sven's blood counts started rising, suggesting that his sister's bone marrow cells had successfully engrafted. Six weeks after the transplant, Sven's diarrhea resolved, and two weeks later, he was able to return home. For the next six months, Sven was kept at home away from non-family members. He was also kept away from sick family members or anyone who had recently received a live vaccine. Luckily, his grandmother lived with the family and was able to care for him at home, so his parents could return to work and continue supporting the family during Sven's long recovery. After six months, his new immune system was considered mature enough that Sven was able to resume a more normal routine. Globally, rotavirus is the leading cause of severe diarrhea in infants and young children, and it's estimated to cause more than 400,000 deaths worldwide each year in children under the age of five. From a public health standpoint, use of the vaccine has had a profound impact on the number of children severely affected by rotavirus. In the United States alone, the rotavirus vaccine is estimated to significantly reduce the number of rotavirus-related hospitalizations each year. In 2010, the diagnosis of SCID was officially listed by the CDC as a contraindication to receiving the live rotavirus vaccine. 
In that same year, newborn screening for SCID, done by measuring the T lymphocytes present in dried blood spots, was added to the recommended newborn screening panel for children born in the United States. The hope is that these new public health measures will allow babies with SCID to avoid vaccine-related complications and to be diagnosed and treated before ever suffering life-threatening infections.